Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Okay, we're back on this little, the last of three 15 Johnsons that I was doing in this little series here. And I had a lot of questions. People like, well, did you fix it? Does it did, when you put the new gasket, head gasket, was that what caused the low compression on the top cylinder? No, that wasn't it. In this video, I'll go over everything for you. Um, I'm going to show you what I found, and just trust me, by the time we get done with the little motor, it'll all be as clear as I can make it. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to get back on this little guy and figure out what's going on. Okay, I torqued the head bolts down, and I'm just gonna see what we get now. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and do both the bottom and then the top. I'm all zeroed out. Okay. I'm gonna wipe that there. Never sees off the top of there. Rubbing my elbows and all that. All right, so here we get on the bottom. We got about one ten on the bottom. So, find me there. One ten will do. And here's where we were having the problem on the old top. See if that changed at all. Zero that. See what we get. Don't feel any better. I felt not much more compression. Thirty. So this engine's got issues somewhere in in that cylinder, even though I can't see it. So it was not the head gasket. So I will pull that head gasket off, wipe it down clean, and look at my options for another cylinder block, being that this one's got to come off anyway. But let me uh, let me take that cylinder head off and get that good gasket out of there. Look at it one more time, see what I can see. Be right back. Well, I don't really know where the issue is on this one. Um, maybe a warped head because the cylinders, this cylinder, the one that's really low, actually looks really good. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but there's going to be scoring. Normally it'll be on the exhaust port side, but it's it looks good in there. I can still see some of the cross hatch and stuff. So It has no, hell, the, the bottom cylinder even looks worse. It's got a little pitting there and stuff. So I don't know what is causing it. Maybe a warped head. I'm not seeing any signs of a thermal catastrophe. The head really looks pretty good just you know with the naked eye I don't I'm not seeing any holes in the block anywhere 
she was salty, so. So. Hmm. Took the new gasket out, cleaned it all up with the carb cleaner, got it all looking brand new again, put it back in its package. Now I'm thinking maybe I should grab a different head and slide it back on there with a different head on it just to see if anything changes. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find a head. I'll be back. Okay, what I did was went over to my bone pile. I got this donor motor and I pulled off this head and this gasket, which looks really good. Um, I put them on there. The numbers didn't change at all. I still had 30 PSI on the bottom. I can't remember the, the story on this power head. I know it had issues. I don't remember what it was. I'm going to look it over and see if I can figure it out. But in the meantime, I put his head and his gasket back on. We've got 30 PSI in the bottom. We've got 100 roughly on the top. I'm just going to see if the thing will start. <laughs> Like I said, sometimes these guys will run pretty decent on one cylinder. But again, I look at I looked at the cylinder and I'm like, man, it don't look bad. Something ain't right. Gas is going in the car. Let's see what happened. Let's see. that. Um. That was weird. I do know, I don't exactly know what's going on, but 
that runs too good to be running without compression from both cylinders. In my, in my opinion, it, 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 that thing's got a lot of oomph just to it. But she ain't cooling properly. She is not cooling properly. What little bit of water was coming out the telltale was milky white salty looking. So, but I sure do want to get another compression reading after that. Now that's with the original blue gasket and uh, head on it. See if I can get it to pop over with the drill. compression to me so we, <laughs> we'll get her out we'll check it again yeah that's kind of bizarre row kind of on a bizarre row side plugs out of here find out what's going on that sure felt like it or it, it ran like it had uh, better than 30 psi on that top cylinder even with these old NGK plugs This has even got that original junky blue head gasket in there. And through my gloves, that engine, it does not feel that hot at all. I mean, I can hold my hand there. I don't know. Bizarro, man. Go right for that top one. We are zero. Not a lot. 
but it felt a little more compression there. 120. What the heck was going on? Well, one. 115 ish, about 117. Well, I can live with 117. Was the gauge messing up? It's been the same gauge I've had for 25 years. There's the bottom, we're zero. About 118. Oh. So, 118 on the bottom. I'm going to do the top again. Maybe we just had a stuck ring. And we vibrated her out. This engine's been sitting, I can tell. So, hopefully we just had a stuck ring action going. What we get? What we get? 120. Only thing I can think of is a stuck ring. Amazing. But we've got 118 or so top and bottom. So that now means. And she run really good. Since I got to pull the head to change the gear shift, I will examine the grommets once I get the power head off. I will examine them grommets up under there. Okay. Little motor runs good. But I think it does have some cooling issues. You know, it's it's cooling. It's it's trying to cool itself, but I don't think it's where it's supposed to be. But uh I will once I get it that power head pulled off. I will uh go ahead and replace that head gasket um, yeah I'm thinking we just had some stuck ring action going cuz that little motor actually starts pretty easy runs pretty good idles pretty good doesn't pee has a broke to did shift handle that we will dig out from under there but now at least we've got a good power head or a usable power head I wouldn't call it good it was salty but uh, I've already cleaned up the head and everything area so it's nothing to pop that head off and get a new head gasket in there so we'll continue on I'll be back okay so we're gonna pull this power head off here um, you unhook the main fuel line and you can just undo that screw too if you want. I, ju I just only pop the hose off. Um, the hose going from the fuel pump to the carb. Unhook it at the carb. Take all your air silencer off. All right, unhook your telltale hose. Unhook your grounds and your other lead coming from the kill switch. Unhook your throttle cable. Um, there's a shift link. Hopefully you can see it. It's right there. It has a little carter key. It goes through that. It goes through that shift link. You pull the little carter key out and unhook that. You unhook one, two, and three cowpan bolts. Then I like to flip it upside down on its head. 
and take off one, two, three, four, five, six on the other side of the uh, power head bolts. And I think that's it. And she should be ready to come out there. So let me get her flipped upside down. Get those um, six power head bolts out and see if we can't pop that thing off and get it that shift rod. I'll be back. stubborn that's about the only place I found you can get into them is right there right in there sometimes from the back there um, you can do some prying up um, another ticket what I do with it is I keep some old screwdrivers and I grind the tip, you know, not on, on a screwdriver that you've previously broken the tip. I grind that tip so it's super sharp, but yet it's fat here. So the minute it gets in between the block, uh, the power head and the lower, it widens it pretty quick. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, that's what I do. Shake him on down. All right, we. And you don't stop. Alright, let's see if I can manage to drop something on the floor. And we have a power head. What the hell is that? Treasures! I don't know what that is. On a treasure, little piece of, I don't know what it is. Put it right there. Um, oh, there we go. We got a power head off. And pretty uneventful. So now it's grommet time. Let's see what we got for grommets. Let's see what we got for the grommets. Grommetine. It's the grommetine. Heck, are you guys even in there? <laughs> Forgive my lack of camera ability. All right, let's see. I heard a different sound. There she goes. Grandma time! Them grommets are perfect. Nothing wrong with those at all. See that? They're wide open. Grommets look good, like they've been replaced even. So, 
why ain't she pee 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 peeing? I'm just gonna reuse that gasket. It a little bit tore right around that one screw hole. There ain't nothing. But you, I can see water actually backed up in the channels. See that? So, I'm gonna dry this off, put a little ATV around there. But, I'm not seeing anything grommet wise that's an issue. And I'm not seeing anything plugged in the inlet or outlet holes that's an issue. So, maybe we got a halfway working water pump. Who knows? But the grommets look good. So let me get this cleaned up. Okay, went out to the bone pile. Forward, neutral, reverse. Got me a shift handle. I put the exhaust tube and all back on after checking the grommets. I put the took the head off, put the head back on. Here's the old crappy blue gasket that's no longer in there. I put a new one in. Hopefully we'll have compression when we get back. Um, so I took out those. Let me get them down there. Took out those two deals that hold this guy on, the shift link. Now we got to take out this one if I can figure out what size it is. Oh, it's got that keeper on it. Never mind. Yeah, you got to take a, I forgot about that. Take a screwdriver. Get you the screwdriver. You got these lock tangs. Is that a word? Tang or a drink? Get that little guy's out your way. I'm going for one, two. Only one. The tang out your way. There you go. See if I can keep everything on this little shelf in the pan. Not dropping it down into the abyss. Okay. Get this shift rod out. Get the new one. I'm gonna put a little arrow on there now. A little arrow, maybe some geese. I don't know. Something to help it slide in and out of there. About a little arrow and a little geese. Just a little. Just a little. A little dab do you. Okay, in with the new. Watch that little bush in. Don't lose your bush in. Got to have a bush in. My bush in. Oh, half my bush in went in. Only half. Stick it over now. All right, then you're going to be difficult right up to the end. That's weird. Oh, that's not the bush in, is it? Or is it? If I can get the bush. Oh, yeah, that is the bush. Mm -hmm. Get in there. Why well, you got to be so difficult? Then that won't let the thing go down. Won't let my thing be. Bushing. Bushing finna get on my nerve. There we go. We almost got it. We've almost got it. Got it. Get up there. I'm gonna cut it. I gotta whack it. So I'll move all my stuff so it don't go to the abyss. There 
Bears. You got to whack it, whack it. All right. So then, gotta get this guy back in there, back on top. Okay, there's my little, or my tang, t -t -t tang Got to put it on the right side. Mm -hmm. Hope I did that right. Um. Um. See, I'm not on a flat there. I've got to get on a flat, so I'm going to have to back that off just a little bit so and get that tang to come even. There we go. Now I'm on a flat. Ta dee ta da. We got a new ship handle. Okay. So now these motor mount deals, they're gonna have a little metal deal. The way the stack goes on the pan itself, big washer, little washer. This goes in the actual motor mount. Which one of them is missing? That guy right there. So I'll put it in the motor mount. Now, when you go back, when you, once you get the power head in here, it's going to be reverse. It's going to be what goes on top is small washer, big washer, nut. Okay? Big washer, small washer, rubber motor mount, small washer, big washer, nut. That's how it goes. But right now we gotta put the, the deal. D -d 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 deal. You know what deal. D -d -d deal, this deal. Gotta have it on there. That deal. I put the deal. Let's make a deal. Okay, so I gotta go over my gaskets and get me a new base to power head gasket. Get it all good in and we'll be ready to set that power head back down in there. Okay, you see this little guy here? You want to make, I always make sure mine are perpendicular to the cow. So that, because that riser has to go in the end of that. And they're all salty like this one was, a little bit of geese in there. Help things slide in. Okay, I got my base power head gasket all gooped in. And, uh, well, let me move over here. Let's see how, how we get her in there. There we go. So she's 
she's ready to go back in. Let me wipe my grubby hands off. The grease and everything. Look, she's got her shift handle. I've checked the grommets. She's got a shift handle. Don't know what else. Here we go. Here we go. Gotta make sure all oh, these motor miles and everything. We're not there yet. Something's... We're not there yet. Getting closer. Now, like I said, you got to guide this thing in a little bit. What was that? Oh, one of my. I can get that out in a minute. You don't think we're there? Alright, better get that in. Close. Close. We're there. All right. We're pretty much in there. Okay. There's the old blue gasket with the little bad spot right there. And the crinkled up bottom. There's the broken shift handle. There's this. Let's see. Power head's all back on. Well, not all. I still got all the silencer air box. Let's start with it. I will do the bottom first. I already got myself confused on there a couple times. Which one had the low compression? All right. ER zero. Let's see what we get, don't you know? Felt like there was something there. One, maybe 21. 121, 122. On the bottom. Here comes the cylinder in question. What happened? We got a new gasket in there. I put a lot of goop. in there. We are zero. See what we get. Felt like it had compression. One twenty one. 22. We got compression both top and bottom. Okay, so let me get her in the tank. The plug's back in. We're going to start it up and see what we get. I'll be back. Okay, you're going to see what I'm going to see. Um, couple of things. I don't have any of the air silencer stuff hooked up yet. A um, couple of things I did find as I was going that was interesting. I blew out the block 
when I had it setting up on the workbench and out the uh, telltale discharge here on the exhaust port cover big old chunk of salt came out and I said hmm so then I pulled the hose off because I'd already stuck a wire up in there and got no results so I pulled the hose off went to blow through it it was completely plugged so I just blew real hard and poof out comes some more salt so we might get pee now I don't know we'll see but uh, we got compression 120 top and bottom I'll have to choke it by you know with my finger but we're hooked up Squeezy bulb is squeezy. Let's see what we get. He's a peeing. Been an interesting little motor. Um, the yeah, a little bit. The no water problem was just salt. Um, and if you think about it, I, I came at it from all directions. We checked the grommets. They look good. I blew air through the grommets. I blew air back up through the water pickup tube and the exhaust small copper pickup tube. Um, I unhooked the telltale hose, found salt all through it. I found the little clip that the telltale hose, the 850 I call them, um, 33, 7, 850 or something's their number. Um, the little plastic thing. It was, you know, half plugged when I first started out. So there was salt all along the channels from the water pickup tube all the way up. And there still is salt. There's still going to be more um, little chunks and pieces of it break off and clog that, that P-tube most likely. Um, I didn't clean the carburetor. Um, I did squirt tri-flow down in there, pull out the adjustment, uh, uh, adjusting needle and all and shot air through there and try to flow through there um, and she was plugged um, somewhere along the car the fuel wasn't getting in so um, the head gasket and the head stuck rings that is the only thing I can think of um, when I was getting the low compression with this head gasket in there on the top cylinder and then I changed it out to a new gasket still got low compression um, something I did do while I was cleaning if you remember I wire wheeled the head surface and the cylinder surface the block surface um, well, then I hosed everything down with carbon intake cleaner. Um, 
and it's just a habit of mine. I do it after I wiped everything down and I sprayed triflow all in the cylinder walls and on the top of the piston and everything. I brought the piston up and while I had it there, I tapped on it with a little hammer. I didn't wail on it, I just tip tip with my little tap it hammer. And I did the same thing as a bottom cylinder. Um, with that triflow and the carb cleaners, maybe there was some stuff rings or an A stuff ring. And then when I kind of got fed up because I'd already changed a head gasket. I swapped out a head and still had no compression. And then so I said, heck, I'm just going to put it back together and scratch my head on it think about it some. Um, when I started it um, and it actually tried to start up and ran for, I don't know, three, four seconds and died, that might have been all it took um, with the solvents and the tri-flow and the tapping on it. And uh, then when it actually fired, um, I got some compression out of that thing. And now I've got 120 on each cylinder. I took out this old junky head gasket that was deteriorating and uh, failing anyway. But it ran. It ran with this gasket on it at 120 PSI per cylinder with that gasket. Um, so, and then of course, once I pulled the power head to get to the broken shift handle, I wasn't about to put this thing back together with that head gasket in it, even though it was running on it. So we've got a new head gasket in there now, we've got good compression, we've got a proper shift handle, it's peeing very well, cooling very well, and it seems to run pretty good. So I'll put the arrow silencer on it and button it back up, and uh, she's ready to get to work, and she's been a Strange little mode. It's been strange. It's been weird. Weird. Yeah, weird little motor. But uh, I think we got her all squared away. What this motor needs now more than anything is taken out and have the Dickens run out of it. A couple tanks of gas. And I'm going to tell that to the owner. I'm going to say, look, if you hang this thing back on a, on a stand and sit it out in your yard and everything, next time you go to use it, it ain't going to run. It needs to be ran. It needs a tank of gas, at least six gallons of gas run through it. I would recommend some sea foam in that gas, maybe a little marble mystery oil in that gas, some Startron, and that's what needs to, to run through there and it needs to be taken out and given a good, good run and get itself flushing out. If I owned the motor and it, and it was mine, what I would do for the first tank of gas, because it's only three little bolts, I would pop the thermostat out of this thing and then mix up some really good treated gasoline 50 to 1 with all the good stuff in it and take it out and run it at least one tank with that thermostat out of there. And uh, then I'd clean the thermostat all up, make sure it works properly and, and put it all back together. But uh, that's what it needs. But uh, I'm not going to go out there and do that for him. He'll have to do it himself, but I will inform him of what it needs. So that's it. We finally got it. So that's going to be a wrap on this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, more vids are coming on Inside Outboards with Cody Bass.